Good afternoon. This is Agatha Morano for NORCAM. A few years back, I attended Open Studios at the Fenway Studios in Boston for artists, and I met a wonderful artist, Melody Fanouf, and she's here with me today, and we're going to talk about art, her art. Melody, welcome, and thank you for letting us into your studios. Oh, my pleasure. Okay. I'm happy to have you. Do you want to tell us a little bit about Melody, the person, where you grew up in school? Sure. I grew up um, in Dreckett on the New Hampshire border. Um, went to Dreckett High School, public school. Um, grew up pretty on, it was mostly farmland. Um, nothing to... Uh, cosmopolitan about it but um, you know as far as art you know I always loved drawing as a kid and um, you know after after high school I decided that maybe that would be something that I could pursue. Where did you go to school? Then? The yeah. first school I went to was a uh, commercial arts school by the name of Vespa George School of Art and it's now out of business, but it was a great school. It was a great little private art school. And from there, I went to the museum school for a couple of years and then had the opportunity to work with a portrait painter at Fenway Studios. So I took a leave of absence from the museum school and never went back. I stayed at Fenway Studios. I have to ask about the name Melody. Was there, was there a foreshadowing of your artistic abilities? I got the name from my grandmother because she saw a movie and the first grandchild, the first granddaughter, was going to be named Melody and th that was the story. There was nothing else behind it other than this movie that she had fond memories. That's great. Um, I wanted to ask you, how old were you when you first, you said you always liked to draw, yep. but how old were you when you finally realized that this, this could possibly be a vocation and an avocation for you? Um, you know, I don't think I came to that final decision until really, until probably 20. Um, I think I... I always loved it, but I always had the impression that it was not something that um, you did as a full-time profession, that um, it was kind of a hobby. So, you know. The I, old way of thinking. The old way of thinking. I, I mean, I never, I did have art class with my grandmother, the same grandmother who named me. Um, there were art classes at the Y one summer, and it was when I was going into the sixth grade. And that was really the only art training I had as a child. Wow, yeah. that's incredible. Do you have a favorite medium that you like to work in? Oil, watercolor, is there something you like particularly more than the other? I, I work in oil primarily, but I also love pastel. So I think those two are my favorite media. I also happen to be, in, you now reside in Gloucester, mm -hmm. in this wonderful studio which you had built for you. Mm -hmm. And I happen to uh, be taking some, some family that came from another part of the country and I, you always come to Gloucester to see the ocean. Yeah. And there you were in a field at a park teaching a whole bunch of, of kids, everybody with an easel. Yeah. Do you enjoy that kind of work? I do, I do. How young uh, and, and how old? I don't, th I don't think you're ever too old. Um, how young, it's funny you should bring that up because Saturday I am teaching a color class at the Guild of Boston Artists and it's a class for children. And I would say they're, Probably the youngest is maybe first grade. Uh, I would say first through third grade. Um, so probably, probably the youngest child um, I would teach is maybe, you know, five or six. That's incredible. Yeah, it's a different kind of um, presentation, obviously, than teaching an adult. 
Are they more pliable and willing to um, try different things? Yeah, and you know, um, I have worked with kids before, and I think kids around second grade are probably um, the best age for young children because they have the flexibility and the control, but they also are dying to please you. So yes, they will, they will try anything. They're not self-conscious, I think. Is well, you were smiling from ear to ear that day when I saw you, and you look like yeah. you were really enjoying it. So my question is, do you prefer studio or plein air? Hmm. I like the balance. I like being outdoors, and I also I love working in the studio. I, it's very different. Obviously, being outdoors, the light is different and so forth, and you're chasing light and shadow more. Um, it's, it also seems to be more social outdoors, because if you are any place where people, you're talking to people and so forth, Whereas studio work is a much more controlled environment, and it's, it's more solitude, I think. How many hours a day do you work in your studio? Um, you know, depending on the light, I would say five or six. A regular work day. Yeah, a regular work day. What do you think is the most significant difference, significant, excuse me, difference from your earlier works to what you're doing now? I think, of course, you know, when you do something for a long time, you have a certain mastery over your tools. Um, I think the other thing is, you know, my attitude towards it is um, much freer. So whether that shows or not, I'm not sure. Um, I, get, I guess if I... You know, I, every once in a while we'll look back at a piece that I did very early on and, and there's a certain aspect of it that um, there's a certain searching that I always, and what I like about working with young people too, because you're trying really hard and you're really attentive to try and describe the visual world and, and how that, not only how that looks, but how that feels. Do you have um, a favorite style or a genre of painting? I mean, I, I have always loved the Impressionist because of their oh. handling of paint um, to describe light. And I tend to like paintings that, that look like paint. I mean, there's a couple different ways of looking at how, how something is finished. You can go at it as if you are, so the outcome might be smooth. You can go at it like making the ob, making the paint look like the object, and you More know. Not 3D. Yeah, but then there's also the aspect of, and I guess the impressionist did this really well, and probably why I like pastel, that you can leave it so that the paint looks like paint painting of an object. It looks um, so you don't discount the paint. So when you, when I think of the Impressionists, a lot of times there's, there's cross hatching, there's strokes of paint, whereas sometimes you finish things to be really smooth so that there's no, um, um, no revelation to the viewer that it's paint necessarily. So. Do you have an all-time one favorite piece of work? That I've done. No, that others that, have that done. That others have done. Um, hmm, one. I know probably many like. Yeah, it's hard to, it's hard to, um, to choose just one. A particular one. impressionist, Monet. You know, Monet, I always Monet. love Monet. I always think Monet is kind of the, the big daddy of the impressionists. <laughs> So. Well, let's, let's go with that. When the Impressionists first appeared, I mean, it was outrageous. Mm. And they weren't allowed to be shown in the Louvre. Mm -hmm. They had to be shown in the Jeu de Pomme. And they had to hang them high enough so people wouldn't hit them with their umbrellas because it was just 
new. Mm -hmm. It was different. Um, and yet it has become probably one of the most popular mm. of arts. Um, and my question in all of this is, as a musician, I was always taught that the last art to come into the style was music with literature and poetry and art and dance, where do you think art comes? Are they the revolution of the new style or do they evolve, evolve from other things? I think they can do both, but I tend to think that art might be one of the primary leaders of anything new, just because I think we are primarily visual and um, I think environment uh, plays a big role in behavior. So I think if you're seeing something all the time, then, then it becomes sort of the norm and other things come from that. But I also think, I also think that something else could lead, you know. You know, I think about music and you saying that music is the last, but yet rap music might have informed a genre of painting that... Has it? I, I think, I think that's possible. I think when I look at a lot of um, the contemporary art I see in galleries and so forth, I think a lot of it has to do with the, um, the rhythms. There's a lot more incorporation of text. Um, that kind of reflects some of the lyrics in rap music. Um, so, so maybe, maybe a musician would look at it differently. I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of stuck with the classicists and the romanticists and the and the impressionists. Mm -hmm. I, I just think they're just absolutely incredible. Um, as a child, we used to go to the um, Boston Common every other Wednesday there was a display of art. Hmm. And um, I can remember seeing a telephone pole with all kinds of really big nails and it was called the porcupine. And I, I, I tried not to be judgmental. I guess it is art, but I see some of the modern things and I say, it doesn't tell a story or it doesn't mm. create a good picture. Um, I see some of the modern art that hangs in the mu museum in Boston, and I say, is it art? It is, but it's not what we're used to. Hmm. What is, the, what is the, the place or the person or the period of, how long does something have to be out there before it becomes accepted and part of the solidified art world? Hmm. I guess it depends on who's in charge. Um, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I don't have a good answer to that. I think, I think it depends. Some of it depends on promotion. Um, you know, if um, someone with some uh, celebrity or media coverage or, or something like that says something is good, then I think people might follow that. Um, and I think um, my observation these days is that um, so much goes on social media. I think the number of likes could have something to do. Are you on Facebook? Yes, yes. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Let's go back to the Fenway Studios. Yeah. Um, can you tell us a little bit about them? I know it's an incredible place. Yeah. Um, you had a, a almost like a, a little condo with a bedroom and mm -hmm. a fireplace, and mm -hmm. the windows are just floor to ceiling, and they face yeah. north. Why is the north light so important? It's constant, because the ah. sun east to west, and the north, actually the south light is pretty constant too, but the north is preferred because it's a cool light. And it makes the shadows, when you're doing indoor work, um, either still life or portrait, um, the cool light makes the shadows warm and rich. Whereas the southern exposure, the light is warmer and the shadows tend toward the cool. And sometimes um, that's not, particularly in portraiture, that's not necessarily the most attractive way to go. 
but it, but it has to do with the constancy of light. The light is the same all day. Behind you, I noticed there's a wonderful, whimsical painting of you yeah. in a jester's costume. Yes. Can you tell us? I know that connects to the Fenway Studios, but can you tell us how? Well, it, it actually, we were, um, it was a, a show called 40 by 40, and there were 40 women artists over 40, 40 or over, that were um, contacted. And it was because I was in Fenway Studios that I was one of the artists contacted um, to paint a self-portrait and to um, write a little blurb about um, how we felt about life at, at that age. So. And was it also for a special celebration for the Fenway Studios? It wasn't for Fenway Studios. It was actually for a play in Boston. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. yeah. Um, which do you prefer, your Fenway studio well, or, or this one? Well, the commute here is great. I, I like this. Um, I like this studio a lot, but I, I do, um, you know, I have the luxury of a lot of space at Fenway Studios. It's a great place to teach class. Um, and there's also the, the, uh, the other artists in the building, so there's a, you know, a community there that I really enjoy. It is a wonderful exhi exhibit and you should check the newspapers to see when it is because it's just studio after studio mm -hmm. of wonderful artwork. I know there's one artist that does nothing but Red Sox paintings. Yes, yeah. And, and there's just so many different styles that um, it, it's just very interesting to go to see. Um, you have all kinds of things that you uh, promote yourself with. You have coasters and little miniatures and you have note cards mm -hmm. and uh, it's just amazing. But let's let's go talk about this particular one. Do you do a lot of commission work or just things yeah. that are inspiration? Both. Uh, both. I do, I do do a lot of commission work. Um, and I enjoy that. It's um, fun to work with people to um, try and bring their ideas to life and decorate their space or whatever it is. And in the case of a homeowner, you know, they might want to create a certain feeling or ambiance in the dining room or, or so, you know, something like that. Um, if it's for, you know, a healing environment, they might want to bring a sense of tranquility or, um, you know, it just depends. And it's, it's, always, it's always enjoyable, it's always a challenge. There's usually a budget, there's usually, um, you know, a defined space that has to be measured and so forth. So, so I, I do like commission work. How about the one you're working on now? Um, it's a lovely vase with some flowers and mm -hmm. some fruit and a few jugs and jars. And I think it's a plum or is it an onion? I, can't, I really can't tell the, the angle I'm seeing yeah, that. Figs. But this is, was this a commission or an inspiration? No, this is just an inspiration. And it was just to, um, I had been doing a lot of landscape painting and I, I set this up and I wanted to work with a certain palette, a certain color scheme so um can you just um I, there's a lovely set of roses and a gorgeous glass vase which really looks like it's glass mm -hmm. you can actually see through it um can you go around and just just give me a quick blurb on that um is it a new painting is it an older painting i've had it for a little while um it was actually that was something that was inspired by a a space that I had been in, and um, it was a home um, in Gloucester, but um, made of granite, and everything was um, hard. Yeah, yeah, and I just got the feeling of I don't know why that interior space stayed with me, but it, it sort of put me in the mindset of painting something very colorful, very um, spring-like. So Beautiful. Thank you. There are three lovely landscapes. Are they in this Gloucester area? Those are all in Essex. 
the um, the marshes out in Essex. I have been doing a lot of those lately. A series. Um, Plenier. Yeah. Like Monet. Yeah, like Monet. Yes. But the design, the design of the marshes is kind of an interesting abstraction. So they're always different. They're always very colorful. Um, so. What's next? Hmm, what's next? I don't know. I'm, I am very interested in working with um, the idea of art and well-being, art and healing environments, um, thus the Marsh series. Um, I kind of like the idea that um, scenes from nature can really bring a, a calmness to, you know, troubled times or people who feel like they could use some healing, um, either physically or emotionally. So I'm probably going to stay in pursuit of that for a while. Do you like to travel to um, other countries and other places I do. to paint? I do. Do you have yeah. a favorite? Mm, of course I have to say France, <laughs> but it's only because I haven't been to Turkey yet. So, <laughs> so yeah. Well, I'd like to thank you for mm. letting us into your studios today. Well, thank you. It's been for... very insightful, and it's been wonderful to be uh, among the, the brushes and the cut glass <laughs> vases and the beautiful artworks and the coasters and the note cards, and you've been very gracious, and I want to thank you so much. Thank well, you for being a part of NORCAM. Thank you, Agatha. And that's it for today on What's Next. Well, I got up to leave and I went to put my pillow back on the chair and I happened to see this picture, which I hadn't seen before. Yeah. And it's Melody the Artist and Mayor Menino. Yes. Yeah. How, how poignant that yeah. yesterday was yeah. his burial day. You want to talk a little bit about that? Because I, I think this is wonderful. Yeah. I love that this was one of our open studios. He used to come to open studios every, I don't know, every three years or so. And, and this one um, that he came to was, I don't know, maybe about six years ago. And um, I don't know, I just enjoyed him. He did a lot for Fenway Studios. He um, was instrumental. At one point, um, they wanted to cover the Mass Pike and build a high rise. The light. Right. The light. And he was instrumental in helping us to fight that and um, um, was also instrumental. We uh, attained national landmark status and because of the mayor and his uh, connections, he, was, he always really worked for, for the city and the people in the city. I, I really think he was a wonderful man. He was a great mayor. And we have, I love this. It's just so whimsical and lighthearted and just a quizzical face that says a lot of different things. <laughs> and I like the uh, glass glass balls. I, yeah, floats. Floats. Yeah, they're right here. Oh, for goodness sake. Yeah. Props. I'm big on props. Still life painters have to be, right? Yeah. And I, I love the little gesture, jester. Yep. With the wheel. Fortune's wheel. Fortune's wheel. Are these the flowers that are in your wonderful yep. flower painting? Yeah. Uh -huh. Aha. Do you, you keep everything? I do. Yeah. Um, what do they? What do you use? I know there's sable brushes, there's acrylic, but what do you use? These are um, these are just hogs hair brushes. So wow. these are good for the beginning stages, block ins. The sables um, you use more as a finish brush. So much different, smoother feel. yeah, much smoother. And there's some synthetic ones in there too that are kind of midway. Love this. Love, love, love the cut. You know the vases, the glass vases. Yeah, it's a good way to keep them. Amazing. Yeah. I own this set of coasters, and I always put them out on my coffee table. And that's my violin. 
And that's my horn. These are my horns, I think, and my bow. Yeah. Which I, you know, I like. And I love the nooms, the ancient music. Is this um, France? That's France. Sunflowers. France. That's, that's France. These, and this is France. This is Gloucester. Those two. There is a famous painting that's very reminiscent of that. Probably, it could be one of the Impressionist paintings, yes. you yes. know? They're, they were good for doing street scenes, a lot of the things they did. Things that were free and open. Yes, yeah. Why? Is this purposely done? Yes. Uh, why? Just to um, control the light a little bit, this, um, having this this way, because I want the light coming from this direction, so this, and also, if you look, if you stand back and look, you can see how this is reflected, reflected. and that's kind of nice. And this, um, this just kind of casts a little bit of a shadow so that the spotlight, so to speak, is, is in the, around your center of interest. How long does it take you to set up something like that? I mean, you were just talking about light and shadow. Yeah. It must take forever to get it just the way it you does. want it. And then the light's gone, so what do you do? Well, Back with, the the north, with the north is, light. Is this north have, light over yes. here? Oh, absolutely. I wouldn't, okay. have, I wouldn't have built anything other than All that. Right. You know, wouldn't, have, wouldn't have been a good investment. Um, yeah, you know, sometimes, sometimes it takes a couple of days. And sometimes you have the right object, but it's the wrong color, or it needs to be a couple of inches higher, or... So there's, there's all kinds of considerations to setting up a still life. Do you ever take a something old and rework it? and My own work, yes. 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 Yeah, I do. You know, and sometimes I look at something and I can see how... You know, in terms of composition, if you think of it as music and you think of moving through a painting like a journey, as if it were music, sometimes, sometimes I look at an older painting and it could have been so complete if this just moved this way. So I'll do it. When we came in, you were painting. Yeah. Now, I just painted my front porch floor, and I was covered from head to toe. Yeah. Not a thing on no, you. Nothing. No. I'm very tidy. I'm oh, okay. a very tidy painter. Amazing. These yeah. things boggle my mind. <laughs> well, I'm sad to go, but go oh, I must. Oh. Thank you so much. Well, thank you for coming. Um, it's been a pleasure. My pleasure.